If you're listening to this podcast, there is a good chance you feel an itch to paint, write, sing, design, or even dance. It's something a lot of us have been feeling compelled to do of late, especially amidst the new routines ushered in by an unprecedented year. Indeed, last year artistic activities of all kinds, from crocheting, flower pressing, to baking and journaling, have experienced an increase in popularity. A recent survey conducted by crafts retailer Michaels found that a whooping 65% of Americans were feeling more inspired to take on do-it-yourself projects. While the urge to create may be stronger than ever, it is certainly nothing new. In fact, the drive to write, make, fabricate and design has deep roots in the human psyche. Welcome to the Creative Monologue. I am your mentor, Gia Amoeli, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about why creativity matters and how you can add some creative spice to your life. Creativity is the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality, writes Linda Neyman, founder of the Canadian consulting firm Creative at Work in Vancouver, British Columbia. It is characterized by the ability to perceive the world in new ways, to find hidden patterns, to make connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena and to generate solutions. It involves two processes, thinking, then producing. In other words, we are creative when we use our imagination to bring something into existence. It is important to note that the new thing need not be Pride and Prejudice or the Mona Lisa. A haiku, a simple sketch, or a novel way to display photos you've taken. These are all examples of ways in which we can exercise our creativity. It is important to ask ourselves, why do we actually create in the first place? Creativity is a decidedly human trait. It is regularly acknowledged as one of the main qualities that sets us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom. The ability to think creatively and to use our imagination is a vital part of the human experience. One could argue that our creativity has been the secret to our survival. Our ability to create tools, build shelters, and figure out new ways and things to eat has been key to our success as a species. For at least the past 40,000 years, humans across societies and civilizations have been innovating both to come up with practical solutions, but also for pleasure, making art for art's sake, to capture and reflect the environment in which they live. In fact, In his book, The Creative Spark, Princeton University anthropologist Dr. Augustine Fuentes argues that your child's finger painting comes essentially from the same place as our ancestors showed when hunting and gathering millions of years ago, and throughout history in making war and peace, in intimate relationships, in our communities, and all of art, religion, and even science. All requires imagination and inventiveness. Whether it's a journal entry or styling an outfit, we are tapping into the same inherent human desire that has been inspiring people for millennia. You're probably asking yourself, can creativity be learned or is it something I need to be born with? Well, let me tell you this. Creativity can 101% be learned. As mentioned earlier, creativity is an inherent human characteristic that dwells inside all of us. Like any skill, the more we use it, the better at it we become. While we may not all produce masterpieces like Mozart or Matisse, it is important to set aside the notion that creative geniuses were simply born with their own unique, unparalleled talent. A study from Exeter University found that a few outstanding performers in the arts, as well as sports and mathematics, showed early signs of promise without encouragement. No one reached high levels of achievement in their fields without devoting thousands and thousands of hours of serious training. Believe it or not, Mozart trained for 16 years before he produced an acknowledged masterwork. Can you believe that? Much practice is required to transform inherent talent into amazing works of art. We live in a world where we want things on the fly, from fast food to fast art to fast deliveries, fast casual relationships, fast internet, and fast everything you could possibly think of. But no masterpiece that we know of was created in haste. You need to be patient with yourself and with your artistry. 
you need to completely and utterly devote yourself to that specific something that you truly love and admire. Whether it's baking, painting, drawing, sculpting, designing, and writing, you need to be patient and embrace your inner artist and creative. The good news, as I mentioned, there is no hard and fast way to be creative. Creativity is all about learning how to expand our minds and grow as human beings. And there are many ways to do just that. You don't need to write a novel or complete a whole room mural to feel as though you've been creative. Invent a song, create a new sandwich, rearrange your home, and you've just done something creative. In 2009, James Kaufman and Ronald Begetto introduced a four-tier approach to creativity called the 4C model, and I'll be discussing this in this week's episode, but I also want you to use this scale as a reminder that creativity exists and is valued on all levels. Although definitions of creativity seem to differ greatly, most of us recognize higher levels of creativity when we see it or hear it. These encounters often cause us to stop in our tracks, as many forms of creativity can be arresting, unusual, breathtaking, disturbing, delectable, highly amusing, or just very, very different. And while creativity is a human gift, alas, we are not all at the same level of creativity, like many other things. I've heard many people claim they are not creative. Let's debunk this myth for a simple reason. It is false. When people accept and deliberately use their creativity, they become more fully engaged in life. In this episode, I present a case that argues in favor of your creativity. Even if you say you're not creative, believe me, you are. The reason you're feeling that you might not be creative is because you're most probably comparing yourself to the most famous creators that ever lived. Dr. James Kaufman and Dr. Ronald Begetto recognize the need for clarification that creativity happens in varying degrees. They developed the 4C model of creativity to show that whether creativity is personal or prolific, it's still creativity at the end of the day. Let me expand this dichotomy by sharing the story of one of my favorite creative leaders to illustrate the 4C model and how creativity can grow over time in an individual or stay distinctly personal and still be counted as creativity. Improv Everywhere, founded by Charlie Todd, that descends upon various venues in New York City to stage fun and harmless pranks. One of the group's most famous feats is Frozen Grand Central, staged in the wintry months of 2008, in which more than 200 actors froze in place for five minutes during rush hour in the busiest hub of Grand Central Terminal. Each prank is filmed and the true entertainment comes from the reactions of unknowing bystanders who find themselves in the middle of a charade that usually surprises and delights them as they realize what is unfolding. Let's start with the mini scene. When he was an actor with an office day job, Charlie Todd played little pranks on friends to assert his boredom and amuse himself. According to the 4C model of creativity, this is mini-C creativity. When you have novel and meaningful personal experiences, new learning insights fall into this category too. Whether you are a student in a classroom or an adult on the job, mini-C represents the initial creative interpretations that all creators have, and which later manifest into recognizable creations. Most of us have some measure of creativity within us. For instance, every once in a while, do you find yourself coming up with your own recipe for a dish? When you need to tie something up and there's no strings available, do you look around to find something that would suit your purpose with a little bit of modification? Well, you are being creative in the mini C way. Moving on to the little C. Over time, Todd began to collaborate with actor friends and create videos of scenes to share with others. He and his friends were, at this point, amateurs. Their pranks were for fun, but started to impact others. Such consistent everyday behavior like being an amateur artist or chef or coming up with a new approach for customer service at work is little c creativity. This level of creativity illustrates creative potential as widely distributed. For instance, you decide to be deliberately and meaningfully creative. So you write poetry, short stories, make paintings for walls of your house, design and stitch a dress for yourself. And people around you begin to say, oh, that is so creative. 
Here you start to exhibit what's called the little c kind of creativity, or what's usually known as everyday creativity. Now for the pro c. After years of work, thousands of people have participated in the worldwide event Todd has organized and millions have seen his videos. Improv Everywhere under Todd's leadership isn't just another flash mob. It is a group that sparks change and is hired by companies, conferences, and communities to do just that. This is pro c creativity when your work affects your field. It often comes after at least a few years of gaining professional expertise and skills in your domain. For others, it might mean publishing papers in academic journals, professional speaking, or finding a new way to program a system. So think about it this way. Anyone who attains professional level expertise in creative fields or any field in general will reach pro -C. Think of it as the next level of creativity which manifests itself when your creations begin to generate funds for you. In other words, you begin to earn your living through your masterful creative pursuits. For instance, you become a travel photographer, a graphic or user experience designer, or a creative engineer or an interior designer. Then and only then do you start to exhibit pro -C creativity. The final level, Big C Creativity, is judged only by history. Familiar Big C names include the Wright brothers, Shirin Neshet, Frida Kahlo, Einstein, Augusta Savage, The Beatles, and Shakespeare. Only time will tell if Charlie Todd is on the list in 50 or 100 years from now. If he is, it means that something he did during the course of his career was impactful on a worldwide scale. Big C creativity is the result of dedicated, passionate work that makes an impact beyond the individual. This level of creativity is called eminent creativity, which means that your creativity has made a lasting impression on your specific field. If your creativity finds you a place in history, then you just exhibited the big C creativity. In Todd's case, the point is to realize that over time, he has found ways to sustain and grow his creative impact. Individual growth is something we can all strive for. Yet, we are not looking for pro C or big C creativity in all domains of our lives. But if that is your goal, then by all means, strive for that. But keep in mind the story of Charlie Todd's progression. From pranking friends to becoming the well-known founder of Improv Everywhere. How it demonstrates how our creativity can grow over time, if that is our goal. It also shows that creativity is just as valid when it is expressed on a micro, personal scale. The 4C model of creativity clarifies that creativity doesn't have to be eminent to qualify. It can happen on many levels, like when a teacher thinks up a new way to present a complex concept that illuminates a student's understanding, or when a guy can't get a replacement for the vintage car he is fixing up in the garage and comes up with a hack with available modern materials, or when you can find a different way to organize your time so you can get more done. Mini C, Little C, Pro C, and Big C creativity all provide nourishment that turns organization and teams of all sizes into possible ecosystems. Even Mini C creativity can have a lasting positive effect on the growth of an individual and of an ecosystem. The trick is to find ways to be consistent by employing both divergent and convergent thinking and the strength that supports them so that you can continue to grow personally. Okay team, this week's homework is all about adding some creative spice to your life. Twyla Tharp once said, Creativity is not just for artists. It's for business people looking for a new way to close a sale. It's for engineers trying to solve a problem. It's for parents who want their children to see the world in more than one way. Here are simple daily exercises that you can choose from to enhance your creativity. These are short creative workouts to let your creative juices flow often with nothing more than a pen and some paper and, of course, a little bit of playfulness. To make it into a habit, schedule 15 minutes of creativity into your calendar and try a different exercise each day. So here we go. I want you to draw something, anything in front of you, a fruit, a coffee cup, your dog, cat, children, for 5 to 10 minutes. Just draw. And don't judge 
and don't erase. And that can be a bit challenging, but don't erase. <laughs> Take your sketchbook to a park, the mall, your work, to school, and sketch or write ideas that pop into your head as you're listening to music or your surroundings. Or if you're like me and noise can sometimes trigger you, just sit in a quiet and comfortable place of your liking and spill all of your ideas into your sketchbook. Pick a song you love and sing it with new lyrics entirely. And record it if you want. And this is inspired by If Barbie Girl was written in 2021 by Hannah Gray on YouTube. Go to a museum with your sketchbook and draw a painting or a sculpture that inspires you. If you can't take the time, go outside your door and draw a tree or a mailbox. It doesn't matter how crude or crooked your drawing is, and I guarantee you, you will never forget what you just drew. This is one of my favorite creative exercises. Write something you want to solve in your notebook before you go to sleep and sleep on your problem and let your subconscious do the work. When you wake up, ideate and write down in your notebook exactly what you saw in your dream. Chances are you saw the answer. If you have kids or if you're a collector of Legos, borrow these Legos and make a plan for your dream house. Pool included, please. <laughs> you can also do this virtually on Minecraft if you're a gamer. Cover your table completely with large easel paper. Draw on it large freestyle your stream of consciousness using a Sharpie. Make sure the Sharpie doesn't seep through though. For 10 minutes or until the whole table is covered, then tape it all together and tack it on your wall. And voila, you just got yourself a piece of art. And next time when you invite people over for some cocktails and dinner, you're probably going to have a blast talking about your work. Next time you're cooking for yourself, your date, or a loved one, change the key ingredient and experiment. Trust me, you're going to surprise yourself and whoever you're cooking for. Stefan Sagmeister, one of my favorite graphic designers and author of Things I Have Learned in My Life So Far, says formulate your life's motto and write it in sugar or salt or with flowers. Collect branches that look like letters on one of your hikes and write your name with them. When you're home, take a photo and post it on social media. And finally, take a different route home and take photographs of the new things you see along the way. And if you want, post it on Instagram and hashtag the creative monologue. The things I have personally learned from these creative warm-ups is one, my thinking continues to be more flexible and multi-dimensional throughout the day. Two, I approach work challenges with less fear and more playfulness. And finally, I am more open to see things in new and unexpected ways. And that makes all the difference to creatively design the life and work you love. Thank you everyone for listening in. I hope today's episode was helpful and informative. Feel free to follow us on Instagram at The Creative Monologue. Have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world. And we hope you'll join us again next week for another dose of creativity. Bye.